Hello and welcome to the screencast on exothermic and endothermic reactions. We're going to start as we start all lessons with a retrieval practice. So I want you to pause the video, try to attempt the questions and come back when you've answered them. OK, welcome back. Right. First question, how many protons, neutrons and electrons are in an atom of titanium? Now we've got the symbol for titanium with its bottom number, which is the atomic number, and the top number, which is the mass number. The bottom number is the number of protons and electrons that you've got, and the top number are the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So, we have 22 protons because the atomic number is 22. We have 22 electrons because they're always equal to the number of protons. And we get the number of neutrons by taking the bottom number away from the top number. So 48 take away 22 gives you 26. Using the diagram, explain why an alloy is stronger than a pure metal. Well, if you look at the pure metal, all the atoms are the same size and they're all arranged in layers, and those layers can slide over each other. If you look at the alloy, high carbon steel, you've got two different sorts of atom, and they're both different sizes, so all the layers are distorted. So those layers can't slide over each other. So the answer is, it's made of two types of atom. The atoms are distorted and cannot slide over each other. Right, complete this sentence. Graphite can conduct electricity because it has what electrons? Well, the answer is delocalized electrons. Complete the reaction sodium plus water. That's when we used to put sodium into water and we got a very violent reaction. We get sodium hydroxide, which is why it's called an alkali metal, and we get hydrogen which is what all the fizzing is. What sort of bonding is found in ammonia? Well, as you can see, it's made of nitrogen and hydrogen. Both of those are non-metals, and we've got what we call a molecule. So it is a covalent, simple covalent, and the electrons are shared. Why can carbon not be used to extract aluminium from its ore? Well, if you remember, it's all to do with the reactivity series. In order to use carbon, the carbon has to be higher in the reactivity series than the metal you're trying to extract. Well, aluminium is more reactive than carbon. So hopefully you were successful with that. Okay, so today we're going to look at exo and endothermic reactions. We want to know what is meant by an exothermic and an endothermic reaction. We want to be able to draw energy profiles for exo and endothermic, and we want to be able to label them. Okay, so what is a chemical reaction? Well, here's what we see when we have a chemical reaction. You might have flames, you might have a color change, you might have it turning completely different like you do in rusting, going from a metal that's shiny to something that's brown and brittle. You might have an explosion. You might have it changing color. Those are the things we see, but this is what's actually going on. We have the things over on the left-hand side of our arrow here that are called the reactants. And they're all made up and joined up in certain groups. So methane looks like this. Oxygen goes round in pairs, right? We've got two of them there. Now, before we can build carbon dioxide and water, what we have to do is break them all down into the little pieces, the atoms, just like you would do if you were playing with Lego. Before you could build something, you had to break down what you'd built yesterday. Okay, so you've got to break the chemicals. The chemical bonds have to be broken and then they get formed. Okay, so whenever a chemical reaction takes place, energy is involved. The chemical bonds are a store of energy and different chemicals store different amounts. 
what is the difference between these different pairs of images? So these ones on the left and these ones on the right. Well, these ones get hotter when the reaction happens. We call them exothermic. Exo, like an exit where you go out. These ones go colder. So we call them endothermic. Endo, like enter, where you go in. So these ones are going to have energy going out and these ones are going to have energy coming in. Okay, in an exothermic reaction, we have a reaction that gives out energy to the surroundings. This is shown by an increase in temperature because when we release energy into the surroundings, the surroundings get a little bit hotter than it was before. So examples of exothermic reactions are burning, burning a fuel, that can be wood, and we call that in science combustion. Neutralization, acid and alkali. Oxidation, where you're adding oxygen. And displacement reactions, they're all examples of exothermic reactions. Right, with these ones, endothermic. They are reactions that take in energy from the surroundings. And this is shown by a decrease in temperature. When you take energy from the surroundings, right, you're going to leave the surrounding a little bit colder than it was before because it hasn't got as much energy. So there aren't that many examples, but here's one that we have met before, thermal decomposition. Okay, so let's have a little checkpoint. I want you to pause the video now and come back when you've answered the questions. Okay, welcome back. What is an exothermic reaction? Well, an exothermic reaction is a reaction that energy is released into the surroundings and there's a temperature rise. Give an example of an exothermic reaction. Well, you could have combustion, neutralization, displacement reactions, or oxidation. When an endothermic reaction takes place, the temperature decreases. Explain why. Well, the reason for that is that in an endothermic reaction, energy is taken in from the surroundings, and this leaves the surroundings a little bit colder than it was before. Which of the reactions in the table are endothermic? Now, how would we know if they're endothermic? Well, we're going to see a temperature decrease. So the only one we're seeing a temperature decrease for is E and F. Which ones are exothermic? Those are the ones where the temperature is going to go up. So the ones that go up are A and B, C and D, and G and H. J and K are neither endo or exothermic because we don't have an energy change. Which reaction shows the largest energy change? So that means that the difference between the starting temperature and the final temperature is the greatest. So G and H has the greatest energy change because it's going up from 18 to 29, which is 11 degrees. So hopefully you got on okay with those. Okay, so that's our first success criteria. What is meant by an endo and an exothermic reaction? So now we want to look at what we call energy profiles for both of those types of reaction. We can represent energy transfers in a reaction using an energy level diagram. So here's what we get when we have an exothermic. Now the reactants are at a certain energy. They have a certain amount of energy in them. So that's what that line represents. Okay, in an exothermic reaction, some of this energy is lost to the environment. So the temperature rises, right? The products are at a lower energy level than the reactants were. We have to put in what we call the activation energy. Additional energy is needed to get the particles to collide, and this is called the activation energy. 
Now on an exam, you have to draw that really accurately. They often ask you to label it. It goes from the top of the peak to the line where the reactants are on. Okay, so the reactants are at a higher temperature than the products and the energy that we get out from the reaction is more than the energy we've had to put in. So therefore the temperature rises. Okay, overall there's a negative energy change. Here we have an endothermic energy level diagram. We've got the reactants and they can be starting anywhere on that energy axis. They have a fixed amount of energy. Again, we're going to have to put in some activation energy. It's going from the line to the top of the peak like it did before. But you notice that the products now have more energy than the reactants did. Okay. Additional energy still needed to put in. That's the activation energy. But this time the overall energy change is positive. Okay, so in an endothermic reaction, energy is taken in from the environment and the temperature will drop. The activation energy is the minimum energy required for the particles to successfully collide and react with each other. Sometimes particles don't have required energy to make the reaction happen and you have to give them the extra energy. So something like heating up paper and it reacting with oxygen. So you would have to heat it up before it would start. So here are the two energy profile diagrams. We've got the exothermic, which goes up to a peak and then the products are a lower energy. So it releases energy. And we've got the endothermic where you have the peak again, but the products are at a higher energy. Okay, we've got a negative energy change in an exothermic and we've got a positive energy change in the endothermic. Okay, so what I want you to do now is pause the video and I want you to write down one to nine whether they show an exothermic reaction or an endothermic reaction based upon the shape. Okay, pause the video now. Okay, welcome back. Right, the first one, number one, that is exothermic because the products are at a lower energy level. The next one, two, is endothermic. Three is endothermic. Four is exothermic. Five is also exothermic. Six is endothermic. Seven's exothermic, eight is endothermic, and finally nine is exothermic. So hopefully you can now recognize what the diagrams look like. Okay, now just one last question to test this success criteria. The reaction of hydrogen with oxygen is exothermic. Copy the diagram, sketch it on a piece of paper and draw what it would look like for an exothermic reaction. On it, I want you to show the activation energy and the energy change in the reaction. So pause the video now and come back in a minute. Okay, right, so the shape of an exothermic reaction will look like that. Doesn't matter how high you've drawn it, as long as the product are at a lower level than the reactant energy and that we've got a peak on it. The activation energy is shown from the peak to the reactant line and the energy change is shown from the reactant energy to the product energy. So hopefully you've been successful with that. Okay, so that's our second success criteria. Now we want to be able to label the energy profiles for exo and endothermic reactions. Right, bond breaking and bond making. Bendomex is the way that I remember it. In order to break bonds, energy must be supplied. So breaking bonds equals endothermic. Bendo, breaking and endo. When bonds are formed, energy is transferred to the environment. 
So making bonds is exothermic. Mex, bendo, mex. So let's just complete this. Exothermic, energy needed to break bonds is, I want you to put in more or less than, and endothermic, energy needed to break bonds is more or less than. Pause the video now and come back when you have decided what should go into the spaces. Okay, welcome back. Right, the first one in an exothermic, energy needed to break the bonds is less than the energy released when the bonds are formed. And endothermic, the energy needed to break the bonds is more than the energy released when the bonds are formed. Okay, here's our third checkpoint. We're going to label the each of the points on the graph, P, Q, R, and S with either the, the descriptions that are written there. So they either will correspond to products, activation energy, energy released in the reaction, the energy of the reactants, or the energy of the products. So I want you to write down P, Q, R, and S, and what description should go with them. Pause the video now and come back when you've finished. Okay, welcome back. Right, P is the energy released in the reaction. Q is the activation energy. R is the energy of the products. And S is where you're going to put the products. All right. Which arrow A, B or C shows the activation energy? Sketch the graph and clearly mark with a cross where the bond breaking happens. Mark with a triangle where the bond making happens. What type of reaction is shown by the energy level diagram and give a reason for your answer. So pause the video now and come back when you've answered the questions. Okay, welcome back. Right, which arrow shows the activation energy? Well, it's A, from the reactant energy to the top of the peak. Mark clearly with a cross where the bond breaking happens. Well, that is on that rise up to the peak. Mark with a triangle where the bond making happens. That is on the, the way that the, the peak falls downwards towards the products. What type of reaction is shown by the energy level diagram in figure one? That is exothermic and the reason for that is the products are at a lower energy than the reactants or you can say that there's a negative energy change for the reaction. Okay so pause the video now and attempt these five questions. Okay welcome back. What is an exothermic reaction? An exothermic reaction is one that releases energy to the surroundings. A reaction has a high activation energy. What does this mean? A high activation energy means that a lot of energy is required to break the bonds. A student notices that a test tube becomes cold when they add chemicals into it. Explain this observation. Well, it's an endothermic reaction because the temperature decreases when the energy is taken from the surroundings. And if it's taking energy from the surroundings, the temperature is going to go down. Draw out and add labels onto the energy diagram below. Well, the first label is the energy of the reactants. The blue arrow represents the activation energy. That line there represents the energy of the products and the red arrow represents the energy change overall in the reaction. Does it show an exothermic or endothermic reaction? It shows an endothermic reaction because the product energies are at a higher level than the reactant energies. Okay, so that's our third success criteria. 
hopefully you've been successful in understanding about exothermic and endothermic reactions. And I'll see you again when we're doing bond energies.